It's the lunchtime rush at Peanut Street Noodles in Sydney's Inner East. Anka Segal now owns 11 of these restaurants and wants to keep rolling them out. So we are a chain of street noodle restaurants. Uh, we are in New South Wales and Queensland. And uh, we are Peanut Street Noodles. And what we do is we specialize in Asian street food and noodle soup, stir fry, salads. Uh, and yeah, what we do best is, and different from others, is we focus on real food and real ingredients. All our sauces are made from scratch in Thailand using real ingredients, and our guests get this real flavor. Anka is meeting Doug Downer, a business coach who's helped launch and grow several franchise brands in Australia. So Anka, tell us how the business got started and tell us a little bit about your story. So our business is called Peanut. It's a funny story um, because the name of our founder is Nut. Uh, and uh, in Thai culture, you add the initial P. It's kind of like made for brother or sister. And he started the business uh, when he moved to Australia. He's a world-renowned chef. And uh, he started working for his grandmother's very, very famous street style stall in Bangkok from the age of six, learning to make real food and sauces from scratch. And when he moved over to Australia, he was kind of shocked with a lot of bland and westernized flavors. And what he wanted to do is really bring his grandmother's stall to Australia. So that's why we are called Peanut Street Noodles in honor of our founder. Anka bought the business 10 years ago when it was called Walk On In. So you mentioned you started with three stores under a different brand. How's that journey evolved to current day? It's been a phenomenal journey and we have really enjoyed every step of the way. I've really been blessed to have great mentors and uh, professionals guiding me. And one of the other things which we kind of did early on is we also got our uh, management team, our restaurant managers and our head chefs to also become partners in our business. So this way our business, uh, we always had uh, help going on. So, and we, we are always a family. There's a lot of people in your space. So what do you think it is that differentiates you from your competitors, what do you do better or different? Well, that's easy. I mean, we pretty much, like I said, uh, focus on real food. Uh, everything we make in our kitchens is from scratch. Uh, we don't use any preservatives. Uh, we don't use any uh, coloring, anything like that. So you really get real food. Uh, like I said, Nath learned all his trade from his grandmother. And in her stall, that's how it used to be. You would purchase the stuff from the morning and then whatever you had you sold it you didn't have any fridges and microwaves and other things and that's what our concept is about it's about these real flavors when guests eat our food they get those flavors you know get they get the chilies and the galangal and the lemongrass flavors so you've had great success where do you see the business heading in the next couple of years we've built uh, a very uh, great brand uh, and we really want to now grow this brand and we want to grow it via franchising and we also want to grow it further via corporate restaurants. Uh, like I mentioned that, yeah, via corporate restaurants, we still kind of do a quasi-franchising where our restaurant managers and head chefs own a partnership in the restaurants. Franchising is often confused. People think of it as, a, as an industry or as a business. It's actually not a business. It's a way of doing business. And it's really about licensing everything that you've developed over a period of time and making that available to like-minded individuals so that they can pick it up like a turnkey operation and you could literally take somebody off the street and get them to pick up your systems and your processes and everything that you've developed over the years you've been in business and they could run a successful operation just like you. So the franchisees, do they own the business and uh, how do they uh, get a return on their investment? Yeah, it's really interesting that you've got to make the distinction between whether they own it or not. They own the assets, but essentially you own the brand and you're licensing the brand to a franchisee so that they can use your intellectual property. Um, so they have a business that you've created and you're giving them the rights to scale and grow that business. So Anka, you started with three walk-on in stores and you've grown that to 11 restaurants. Over what sort of time frame and how did you go about doing that? We were quite slow because we just wanted to get it right. Uh, I guess right from the beginning, we wanted to create a world-class company um, built around outstanding people, uh, great systems. And uh, 
And so in the beginning, that was really it, you know, to develop these sauces uh, that not learned from his grandmother and really get the right flavors. You know, I remember running through maybe 10 different 15 varieties of chilies, imagine that. And of course, you know, getting the right team behind us. And once we had that, we really started taking off in 2015, uh, and then we kind of added about two to three restaurants every year. So what is your understanding of franchising? Pretty limited, um, Just I just know McDonald's and all these uh, other big franchisees. So does my business need to be a certain size by revenue or turnover or the number of restaurants so that, one, so that it's eligible for franchising? Look, I don't think a business needs to be a certain size, but there are some key characteristics that are critically important. I think if you're thinking about franchising, as a franchisor, you need to make sure first and foremost that there is enough money and return on investment for the franchisee. So if you have a proven model, business model, that can deliver a return on the investment that the franchisee makes, then you potentially have a business that could be franchised. My belief is that every business should be franchise ready so that they can operate like a franchise whether they franchise or not. Yeah, that's quite an interesting thought, but what are really the benefits of being franchise ready if we never want to franchise? I think one of the challenges for a lot of business owners is that the businesses are successful because of the owner. Now, if you can get your business to a point where you put systems and processes in place that make it franchisable, then as a business owner, you're able to step back and the business can operate without you. So, you know, the most challenging part about being a business owner is it's often very dependent on you. Yeah. The beauty of franchising is the ability to have others take your model and make it work. Sure, as so it's lower risk for them to them. So I think like any business, there is risk. Um, there's inherent risk in any business. Interestingly, from a statistical point of view, independent businesses, 50% of them fail in the first four years of operation compared to the franchise sector where it's 80%, over 80% success rate in that first four year period. So one of the hesitancies for me always has been uh, is, you know, like we have really been strong on our values and our brand and our standards. And how do we ensure that our uh, franchisees follow that system and follow the business values and uh, high standards that we have? So I think there's a couple of key things there, Anka. Firstly, you need to make sure that you've got really clearly documented and established standards and procedures and the way that you do things within your business and that then you're following up, you've got systems around how you can monitor the business performance. Um, but I think the most important thing, and anybody that's thinking about franchising their business, needs to look at it from the perspective that you're actually not selling a franchise. And I think that's where a lot of franchisors make the mistake. As a franchisor, what you're doing is you're granting the rights for an individual to use your brand and you want people that have shared values, the same values as you, and that are just like you that enable you to grow the business and maintain those high standards. So if you're looking to become a franchisor, the first thing you need to do is make sure there's enough money and return on investment for the franchisee. Then make sure you've documented and established standards and procedures for the business. And the statistics are positive. More than 80% of franchises succeed compared to independent businesses where half are failing in the first four years.